Today we're going to be taking a look at going from this to this. Okay, so what I'm recording this video in is my college dorm room. And it's super, super small, doesn't have a lot of space, and it's not the greatest lighting situation. It's basically not a great setup for YouTube. I mean, I can literally touch one end of the wall with this hand and the other end of the wall with that end. And that's not good. For an example, I have to walk over my bed just to get to my shelves and my cupboards. So all that being said, it's still possible to have a good setup even in a tiny, tiny, tiny situation as I'm gonna show you in this video. My name is Aryan. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get right into it. The main point of this video is to basically show you that even if you don't have a lot of space, even if you had a pretty ugly setup, you can still get away with looking half decent as long as you keep in mind that everything that you need to do has to be super, super well thought out and has to be planned really, really well. So as soon as you enter the room right in front of you, that's my study desk. That's what you're seeing right now in this shot. And then to the right of that is my bed. I got a queen size bed because I'm a tall guy. So I need that extra leg room. And then kind of over top or like in front of that is my shelves and then some drawers that I have to store some additional stuff. So like, as you can see, it's super, super tight. It has like no space. So when everything is set up like the way it is right now with the light, the camera, the mics, it pretty much takes up the whole area of the room. That's why I need some place to put all this stuff when I'm not using it. So lucky for me, everything kind of collapses down pretty small so I can stow it away in between the cover and the wall. Kind of gets out of the way, it lives below my backpacks. So in that sense, it's not the worst situation because at least I have some place to put all this stuff when I'm not using it. So I'm gonna be going over some of the gear and some of the ways that I maximize the most out of this little space so that I can have a very, very simple and if you wanna say minimal setup while still making it look half decent. So first, let's go over some equipment that I use. I guess you can get this one right out of the way. The camera that I use is the Sony a7S III. Now, this is a little overkill for YouTube. You do not need to be spending this amount of money on a camera. Realistically, any camera will work as long as you know how to set up the lights and you know how to set up the audio. For me, I chose this camera because I really like the versatility it gets me, whether I'm shooting for YouTube or any other things that I'm shooting for. So that's why I personally use this camera, but I've seen people use their phones, I've seen people use any beginner camera, so don't let the camera stop you from creating YouTube videos. So pretty much everything that you see on this YouTube channel so far has been shot with this camera and some of the lenses I have on it. Right now I'm shooting with the 24 millimeter f1.4 G Master lens. This is kind of like my talking head lens because it's small, gives me a fairly wide angle and it looks good. I got the 24 to 70 f2.8 G Master lens, which lives on the camera majority of the time. And that's pretty much the most versatile lens. If you had to get one lens to do it all, that's the lens I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend because at 24, you still get a wide shot and at 70, you still get that really, really nice compression. And at f2.8, really, you can't go wrong with that lens. It is a little bit pricey, but that's kind of like the one do it all lens. So you can get that lens and then you can save up for a long time to get other lenses down the line. Now, I also have a telephoto lens, which is the Tamron 70 to 180. That lens I don't use too much, but it is nice to have because it gives you that really nice compression and for further subjects, for something that you want to have a little bit more zoom with, definitely comes in clutch. And then the final lens that sometimes lives on the camera is the 50 millimeter 1.8, the nifty 50 if you will. I feel like that's a pretty inexpensive way to step up from the kit lens that your camera comes with. The camera lives on a Manfrotto tripod with a fluid head. I'm gonna put the model of this tripod in the description with everything else that you hear about in this video. So if you wanna have a look at that, that's gonna be the source of information. So just a couple months ago, I recently upgraded from my $20 tripod that I've had for like six years to this tripod. It has a fluid head, which makes those panning shots really nice and smooth. It's a nice sturdy metal tripod. So if I have some bigger lenses on this camera, I'm pretty secure where it's not gonna topple over and it's not gonna give out on me. So again, this tripod lives in that little space between the drawers and the wall. I collapse it up. It's not the smallest tripod in the world. It's definitely, definitely not a travel tripod, but it is nice to stow it away. The key to making the setup a little bit more of that minimal type setup is just having one light. Now, the one key light that I use is the Godox VL150. This is kind of like the budget version of the Aperture 120D, if you will. Now, like I said, it is a one light setup. Aside from this little stylistic light I have in the background, this is the light that's lighting me pretty much all. The room light is off right now. 
So I always set it up at a 45 degree angle for me. I feel like that's the most flattering angle for lighting directing on a subject. And I have a 36 inch soft box on it, which softens the light so it's not harsh shining on your face. The one thing that you do need for your light is a soft box in my opinion, because having that harsh light on your face does not look good at all. What kind of helps in this setup is that my walls are white. So it kind of acts as like a bounce that fills in some of this area of my face where I don't need another light here as a fill light. So it kind of helps having that white wall here. But in my opinion, the most important thing to making any setup look good is gonna be the lighting. Cause like I said, I filmed that little intro sequence with this exact camera and change the settings a little bit just to make myself visible. But the whole difference that you see is just me turning this light on, the main light off, and then this little stylistic light. Like that's pretty much it. And then that makes so much of a big difference. Now I think the next most important thing is the audio setup. And that's something that I wanna upgrade really, really soon because I'm still using this like little Amazon boom mic that I got. And it was like pretty inexpensive. I think it was like under 50 bucks. So not the greatest setup for audio for me, but it does get the job done a lot a lot better than some of the internal microphones like that sounds pretty much like trash and then even if i did have like a little road video micro let's say on top of the camera that's still not going to deliver the same audio because the camera's so far away from me at least with this boom mic it's like just here out of frame so in my setup the light stand and the mic stand are both two cheap light stands that i found on amazon from a company called newer i think i got both of them for like 40 bucks which is like pretty pretty good and then i got a cheap little newer boom pole connecting the mic holding that up really nothing special like that just goes to show you i've created like at the time almost like 40 videos and this has been the setup so you really don't need a lot to make it start some other nice little subtle touches that i do that i think personally adds a little bit more character to my videos is i always have a background light i feel like it just adds a little bit more pizzazz to the video and i think it just makes it look better and kind of makes the background look a little less boring the next thing that I do is I film into a corner. So this is the corner right here, right behind me. And that just kind of makes the space look deeper and it adds more depth to the image. More depth is usually a good thing. The other thing that I did is I added a little bit of stuff in the background. I had some posters, I had a couple hats hanging, I have this little contraption thing, and it just adds a little bit of character rather than looking at like a plain, boring background. It just adds some more things that the eye can look at and that draws attention to it without taking too much attention away from the subject itself. But the whole point of this video, like I said, is to show you that you don't need to be spending a lot of money to make videos look good. These posters, this whole like prop setup kind of thing, these posters were like five bucks each on clearance from Ikea. Hats that I already had just hung up on the wall. This little thing over here was like $14 and this light I just found at home. So it's not like I'm spending a lot of money on different things, but everything that I put here is just very thoughtful and very planned out. I also got my desk behind me partly because I don't have any other place to put it and partly because it adds to that depth again it makes the background look a little bit bigger than it is because this room, I'm telling you, it's super, super tiny. I'm gonna be doing a desk setup tour too, so just make sure you stay tuned for that. Basically, what am I getting at from this whole video? The whole point is to show you that making small little changes with high intent can make a very, very big difference to your overall image and the overall production value of your YouTube channel. Now, in no means am I saying that this setup is perfect, I wanna upgrade a lot of things. I'm learning, I'm adapting, changing things, testing things out, as should you. If you don't like something or if you wanna do something a certain way, test it out, see if it works. So that's gonna do it for me in this video. Thank you for watching if you stuck to the end. Like I said, I'm gonna be back at again with a new video coming up really soon. So like this video, subscribe to the channel to see more, and I'll be back again in the next one. Thank you for watching.